Hello, I am David Tucker and this is AWS This Week. We have got a lot to talk about this week and I wanna give you the rundown. We'll kick things off by looking at the new AWS controllers for Kubernetes that adds support for some of the most popular AWS services. We'll then shift over to talk about how DynamoDB yet again blows the doors off of previous service limits. Then we'll examine new APIs for managing users and groups with the AWS IAM Identity Center. Now after this, I've got two mini announcements for serverless developers, with one focusing on some new intrinsic functions for AWS step functions, and the other about the SAM CLI adding support for ES Build. To the news! So let me explain this. On one side of the AWS world, you have Lambda, RDS, step functions, and KMS. On the other side, you have Kubernetes with EKS. If you wanted to work within both worlds, you had to use separate tools to deploy and manage each, but something happened this week. AWS has released support for a ton of new services under the AWS Controllers for Kubernetes Initiative, or ACK, because AWS didn't have enough three-letter acronyms. Now, with this release, you can now use Kubernetes to manage RDS, Lambda, Step Functions, the Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, and their key management service known as KMS. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that you can use Kube Control to deploy resources in these AWS services with definitions that you have defined using typical Kubernetes YAML configuration files. Now, if you spend a majority of your time working within Kubernetes, you now have a... Really, David? This is going really slow, so I'm going to stop it, Joe. Go back to the beginning of this section. Now, if you spend the majority of your time working within Kubernetes, you now have the power to interact with a lot more AWS services than you did before. Check out the link in the description to see this new capability in action. What if I told you that you could do something truly career changing before the end of the year? Now, if you're looking to get started in cloud or boost your career, we're inviting you to get cloud happy. Until the end of the year, we're giving away free training for Amazon's cloud practitioner certification, Microsoft's AZ900 Azure Fundamental certification, and Google Cloud's digital leader certification, as well as the HashiCorp certified Terraform associate and certified Kubernetes administrator certs. So if you're ready to get your head in the clouds, check out the link in the description to sign up for free and boost your cloud career now. Next up, the Dyna the DynamoDB. <laughs> Next up, DynamoDB continues to add new superpowers to its capabilities. Previously, transactions within DynamoDB were capped at 25 distinct actions. So what did they do this week? Did they increase it by a factor of two? No. Did they increase it by a factor of three? Nope, still higher. They blew away the previous limit by increasing it by a factor of four to 100 actions. This change means that you can group all logically grouped modifications into a single transaction rather than having to split them up in a series of distinct transactions. Now, I'm sure some of you might want that limit to be even higher, but we know that DynamoDB continues to improve and add new capabilities. So it's possible we'll see this number climb to new heights in the future. Now, according to the documentation, this limit has already been raised, so give it a try today. This week, AWS answered one of the biggest complaints from users of the IAM Identity Center service. Now, most of you are probably saying, great, what's the IAM Identity Center service? Well, this is the service formerly known as AWS SSO. This means that if you're managing access across multiple AWS accounts with the IAM Identity Center service, you can now use these APIs to create, delete, read, and update those users, groups, and their permissions. These APIs are generally available and you can try them out anywhere you're using the service. Now don't worry, I didn't forget those two mini announcements for serverless developers that I teased earlier. First up, AWS Step Functions adds 14 new intrinsic functions. According to AWS, now, Step Functions makes it easier to perform data processing tasks such as array manipulation, JSON object manipulation, and math functions within your workflows without having to invoke downstream services or add task states. If you ask me, less code you have to write is always a win. Now also, the SAM CLI now supports ES Build for bundling your JavaScript and TypeScript assets. Now you can take advantage of source maps, tree shaking, and minification, all within your SAM projects. 
Now listen, I could talk about AWS for ages, but we have to wrap this episode up. I've got to go get ready for the next Cloud Builder Live episode. But you know where to find the latest AWS news next week, right? It'll be right back here on AWS This Week. If you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button and keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus.